What happened that night, Jesse? When I landed in Chicago and Frank Gatson, who's like my uncle, and he's also my creative director, and he picked me up. And then we got back to the apartment. There was no food. There was no food. And so I went out to Walgreens thinking that they were 24 hours and to have a smoke. <laughs> uh, Walgreens was closed. Um, so I called him up and I said, hey, I'm gonna run to Subway, which was across the street, and I'm gonna get a salad. Do you want anything? I went to the Subway and got the order. During that time, I texted my manager thinking that he was still in Australia because he was on an Australian tour with one of his other clients. Mm -hmm. And I said, yo, call me when you can. He called me immediately. And while he was on the phone, I uh, heard, as I was crossing the intersection, I heard Empire. And I don't answer to Empire. <laughs> My name ain't Empire. Uh, and I didn't answer. I kept walking and then I heard Empire. So I turned around and I said, the f did you just say to me? And I see. The uh, attacker uh, masked and he said, this MAGA country punches me right in the face. So I punched his ass back. And then um, we started tussling, you know, it was very icy. And we ended up tussling by the stairs, uh, fighting, fighting, fighting. There was a second person involved who was kicking me in my back. And uh, then it just stopped. And they ran off and I saw where they ran. And the phone was in my pocket, but it had fallen out and it was sitting there and my manager was still on the phone. So I picked up the phone and I said, Brandon, and he's like, what's going on? And I said, I was just jumped. And I, then I looked down and I see that there's a rope around my neck, which I hadn't. You hadn't noticed that, it before? No, you didn't because see? it was so fast. You know what I'm saying? It was so fast. How long did this all It felt take like minutes, but it probably was like 30 seconds, honestly. I can't tell you, honestly. Um, I noticed the rope around my neck and I started screaming. And I said, there's a rope around my neck. Did you get any kind of description of the attack? I gave a body description and I, you know, because I saw this, but and you know, right here or whatever, but I didn't see, I can't tell you what color their eyes were. I can't tell you. And I did not see anything except the second person I saw running away. And the first person, yeah, I saw, saw his stature. I gave the description as best as I could. You have to understand also that it's Chicago in winter. People can wear ski masks and nobody's gonna question that. The police have gone through a lot of video and they were able to capture an image of two people of interest. Have you seen that image mm -hmm. and do you believe that they could possibly be the attackers? I do. What is it about their their size or what? why do you feel that they could possibly be? Because I was there. For me, when that was released, I was like, okay, we're getting somewhere. I don't have any doubt in my mind.
that that's them. Never did. Um, during that time before they came, it took them about maybe half hour to come. And during that time, I was looking at myself, just like checking myself out. I saw the bruise on my neck, you know, like the little, um, the rope burn around my neck. And then I But I smelled bleach. I know the smell of bleach. And I saw on my sweatshirt, it had marks on it, like spots on it, when you have a bad bleach job. So then I was like, there's bleach on me too. So when the police came, um, I kept the clothes on. I kept the rope. So on. you had the rope on the entire time? I mean, it wasn't like wrapped around, but yeah, it was around because I wanted them to see. I wanted them to see what this was. If the attackers are never found, how will you you be able to heal? Um, I don't know. Let's just hope that they are. You know what I'm saying? Like, let's, let's not go there yet. Let's, um, <laughs> I was talking to a friend then. I said, I just want them to find them. And she said, sweetie, they're not gonna find them. And that just made me so angry because so I'm just gonna be left here with this? You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm just gonna be left here with, with like, so they get to go free and go about their life and possibly attack someone else? And I'm here to left with the, left with the aftermath of this pool? That's not cool to me. That's not okay. So I understand how difficult it will be to find them, but we gotta, I still want to believe with everything that has happened, that there's something called justice. Because if I stop believing that, then what's it all for? The phone. Mm -hmm. When did you, because as you said, it was a, an accurate account mm -hmm. of the timeline, valuable information. When did you make that information available to the police? We gave, we had to give the phone records, um, which they didn't originally ask for my phone records. They asked for my phone. They wanted me to give my phone to the tech for three to four hours. I'm sorry, but I'm not gonna do that. Why? Because I have private pictures and videos and numbers, my partner's number, my family's number, my castmates' number, my friends' numbers, my private emails, my private songs, my private voice memos. I don't know what that's gonna be to hand over my phone for And honestly, by then, inaccurate false statements had already been put out there.